guess it's just instinct that I always want to do that. Big, flat, soft surface must plank. <laughs> been like a week since I've done this, so probably gonna be a little rusty. Hello. I am back from my <sighs> week off, and it was perfectly splendid. Come on, buddy. Let's go get your snap here. Nick is trying to take a portrait of Frodo, and I uh, feel like he needs my help, so. You a good boy. Wait, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. he's pissed. Yeah, are you a little pissed. Wait, wait. Don't, don't back sass me. Don't, don't do it. No, sit. Oh, excuse me, sir, sir, sit. Come on, sit, no. Well, that didn't work. We'll update in a few weeks when that film comes back. Anyways, like I was saying, I am back and I'm ready to make stuff again. Is that because I'm not clever enough to come up with any other kind of content? In all honesty, I never thought that making my clothes would be so addictive. I think part of that is because I've become so picky. Quarantine has kind of done that to me where I have these garments that I haven't worn in a year or so. I think part of me is just sick and tired of buying stuff that I never wear. My solution to that is just making something that I know I'm gonna like. It's a bit like back in the day when you were to shop at Charlotte Russe or Forever 21. You know, you would see a piece of clothing that you thought, sure, Sure, I'll buy that. And then you just turn it around and it looks like this. And that's kind of what vintage shopping on Etsy has felt like to me lately, where it's, I just, I'll like parts of an item and then other parts will just make me not want to buy it. Whether that be something weird that's happening in the dress or the price is a big one. Now, while I have been struggling a little bit with my style and finding items that I like, I have been finding myself more drawn to pinafores. Pretty much like a dress, except you can change the blouse underneath and they can look completely different. We just finished binging The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. The pinafores in that show are... And I was just kind of sitting there like... I have a mighty need! Long story short, what I thought we would do this week is make a couple different pinafores in a couple different styles. From here, we will go to design phase and then we will talk about the material and we will talk about the patterns and then we will get started on these bad boys. But before we do that, we do have a sponsor for today's video and to talk a little bit more about that, here's sponsor Rachel. Oh hi, do you like hidden picture and puzzle games? Well, this video is sponsored by Seeker's Notes. Seeker's Notes is a hidden object mobile game. So basically you are what is called a seeker, the owner of a powerful artifact, the magical map. And the residents of this cursed town called Darkwood are asking for your help to figure out the mystery and to find some stuff. It's no secret that I love games that are beautifully made, and this game is exactly that. It has a very kind of Victorian steampunky kind of vibe to it. It also has a really beautiful soundtrack. The sound design is just, just wonderful. In addition to the hidden picture levels, there's also puzzles that you can do. Also, this game is huge. Like if you look at the level map and it's completely free and there's a new patch every month. There are guilds and guild missions. And on account of it being their fifth anniversary, they're doing a Facebook giveaway where they are giving away 50 $10 Amazon vouchers. All you have to do is go over to Facebook, post a screenshot to prove that you're level 11 and they will choose 50 random winners. I highly recommend that you go check out Seeker's Notes. I will have the information you need down below. And without further ado, let's get back to it. Welcome back. I bet you hated that editing, Rachel. Let's head into design phase and figure out what I'm actually doing for these two pinafores. Okay, so the plan for these two pinafores, style number one, 
I am going to replicate the pinafore that I made a few months ago that I'm sure you're sick of me talking about. <laughs> Basically, it is just a really long skirt with a simple bib and straps. And then for style number two, it's gonna be a little bit more involved and it'll be a more structured pinafore similar to what Beth wears in The Queen's Gambit. This one will be more calf length where the other one will be floor length. I did stop at the thrift store for this project and I made out like a bandit. $40 later, I have yards and yards of actual fabric, wool and cotton, which is nice, and then some tablecloths, which, you know, your girl can't resist. So very quickly, let me grab those babies and I'll go over what I have. <laughs> <laughs> For this project, I am not going to make something brown. Editing Rachel, if you could now make my jaw drop like an old fashioned cartoon. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I have narrowed it down to two different fabrics that I think I'm gonna use for this. Chose these two because they're kind of wintry. Number one this green tablecloth. There isn't a lot here. For this one, I am going to do the shorter version. We might have to switch fabrics halfway through, but I'm hoping that this is just enough. I'm definitely gonna have to be careful with selvages and that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> For the longer pinafore, I am going to use this fabric. Wintery, kind of Christmassy, kind of hurts your eyes, which you know I don't mind in clothing. I like when people have to shield your eyes when I walk in. Don't look at me. Today I'm going to focus on the longer skirt just because it's pretty easy. And then tomorrow we will focus on the more structured dress. For the longer pinafore, I am going to use the bottom half of this, which I have used about a trillion times and I'm sure you're not sick of it at all. And then as far as the bib, I just kind of winged it with my pinafore and it turned out fine. So that's exactly what I'm going to do this time. Now for the more structured pinafore that is kind of more directly inspired by Beth from Queen's Gambit, this McCall's pattern. Super stinking cute. I mostly just liked how structured the bodices are. I might just go off on my own and make a different skirt. We'll see. I don't even remember where I got this and someone may have sent it to me. So if you remember sending this to me, thank you. I really need to keep better notes of who sends me what. 32 bust. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, the waist is about three inches. Hmm. Those are the two patterns. Those are the two fabrics. Those are the two designs. I am just gonna get to work on the longer pinafore. Wish me luck. He's a sleepy man. He's a sleepy man. Excuse me, sir. I just have to, uh, boop. Okay. One note about this pattern that I am going to do a little bit different than what I usually do. If you've seen me use this pattern before, you will know that it has a ridiculous amount of panels and they are all labeled differently. They're all labeled like skirt side back, skirt side center, skirt front center, skirt front center side, and just, you know. <sighs> And they're only slightly different around like the waistline. What I'm going to try to do is just use one of these panels and just cut out as many as I can, which now that I'm looking at it, doesn't seem like it's gonna be all that much, which is not a huge deal. I think when I made my pinafore, I only did eight panels, but perhaps to save time. Oh yeah. It's definitely gonna be tight, even just trying to get to eight panels. We might have to cut on a fold or something like that. So, you know, I'm just gonna go for it and uh, deal with problems 
later. <laughs> able to weasel seven panels out of this fabric which I guess is the risk you take when you're thrifting fabrics I don't foresee it being a problem I believe when I used eight yards there was still a bit of slack in the waist that I had to pleat maybe it'll be fine uh, I'm gonna pin these all together and see this feels pretty heckin hefty so I think it'll be okay let's see Seventy-five years later. Okay, trying the skirt panels on. They're just pinned together right now. It's not bad. I think it's still pretty swooshy. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. And all these panels together pretty much cover my waist measurement. So I'm gonna get started on sewing all these panels together, which takes forever. <laughs> You ain't never seen fashion like this before. I want to introduce you guys to my favorite TikTok ever. Thank you to my friend Sarah for sending that to me and for possibly changing my life. <sighs> Why are we here? Pinafores. Pinafore number one is almost done. A little rundown of what I did for that because it gets so dark now that I uh, didn't film an update for last night. It gets dark at like four o'clock. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I connected all of these skirt pieces. To make the waistband, I made a piece of fabric a little bit longer than my waist measurement. I made it thick enough so that I would be able to fold it over. I pressed both edges inwards, connected it to the right side of the skirt, and then folded it over and sewed it again. Bam, waistband. Oh, madam? Beans check. check yeah. For the bib, basically just copied the shape that I made for my brown pinafore, made it a tiny bit bigger, cut out two of those shapes, sewed them around the edge, except for the bottom, inside out, and then you turn it right side in. And then the straps themselves were super easy, kind of like the waistband, make a long strip of fabric, enough that it can be folded over and it's kind of the, the right width that you want. Sew that inside out, you do the uh, safety pin trick, and then you have straps. The process of this dress is very easy, but it looks like you spent a lot of time on it. All right. So here she is so far. The skirt portion is pretty much done. I have to hem the bottom, but you know, that's finishing touches kind of thing. And then I do have to add a zipper on the back of this. I was going to do a button enclosure, but it's pretty tight. <sighs> tight. So uh, I think I'm just gonna do a zipper because I don't really have that overlapping. The straps, I have to attach those and then I have to attach the bib section and then the buttons. So I'm gonna get started on the finishing touches for that pinafore and then we can get started on the second one. Alright, so the first pinafore is pretty much done. I got everything connected and I put the zipper in there, which I put in inside out the first time around and I got very flustered and very sweaty. But it's all set now. Moving on. Let's take a look at this pattern. I'm interested to see how many pieces this is. That's what it's going to look like. 
Initially, I was just gonna do my own version of the skirt, but I think this will be fine. Mostly because I'm a little concerned I won't have enough fabric for this, so. <laughs> Probably have to do a little bit of adjusting, adding more give towards the seams of the bust and possibly the waist. I am going to find the pieces that I need and we can start laying out the fabric and hopefully I have enough. Cross your fingers. Let's give it a shot. So here are the pattern pieces all laid out. I feel like the more curvy a dress gets, the more difficult it is to visualize these pattern pieces and how they're all gonna fit together. That's because there is gonna be a lot of manipulating around all the curves, the front, side front, side back, and the back, and then all the facings up here. So I guess the next step is just to lay out the fabric and see if we can make this work. And if not, then we will be switching fabrics. <laughs> There clearly was not enough of that green tablecloth to use. I'm going to go with this. Again, it's very like wintry. I'm not too mad about it. Um, number one, I can just use that green fabric for something else, maybe like a shirt or something. And then number two, I feel like Beth has a pinafore that kind of is around these colors. So let's lay this baby out. <sighs> just instinct that I always want to do that. Big, flat, soft surface. Must plank. all the pieces cut out. I just have to make some darts here and here. Start pinning these together. This pattern is going to be really essential that I'm matching these notches because that is what is going to give it its kind of curvy shape. And then after that is all pinned, I definitely got to try it on and make sure that it actually fits me, which I'm a little nervous about. But I also feel like I'm not allowed to complain about it because the lack of a uh, mock-up. They call me Rachel No Mockups Maxi. Give me a ring at lunchtime every day upon the phone. Jones rang up to his future bride upon the sewed everything together and as you probably saw when I tried this on it was very loose for the past pretty much hour have been kind of going in and just making this more flattering making the darts more pronounced and taking in the side seams it's a little boring <laughs> I have to figure out a zipper situation and then I have to do all the neck facings and such which will be nice because right now it's kind of wide so bringing this in a little bit and it'll be a little bit more flattering especially with these gigantic shoulders it'll probably look more like that. Progress!
Book time. All right, all right, all right. They are done. Two more pinafores. Now added to my collection. <laughs> yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with both of them. Weirdly enough, they both have kind of the opposite problems. Longer gray pinafore is uh, a bit too tight. <laughs> It's fine. I didn't have to force the zipper or anything, but when I wear that, I'm just going to have to make sure that I don't eat at all. <laughs> and then this one is just a little bit too loose, which figures. Although that does make it super comfortable, and I think as long as I wear a belt, it's not that big of a deal. What I like about this one is that it actually kind of feels like a vintage dress just because the material that I used is really thick. It's very structured so that tends to make it have a lot of weight to it and it feels like it's from the 60s or something. I don't think I'm quite done with this dress yet. I have to go in and kind of fix the facings. I don't think I tacked them down quite right, so it's a little lumpy to go in and nip in the waist just a tiny bit more. And then as far as the longer pinafore, other than it being a little uh, snug, it's really comfy, pretty swooshy for only being seven panels. Yeah, I think it's cute. I think it'll be cute around winter, Christmassy time. Same with this. That is it. It. Thank you so much Seekers Notes for sponsoring this video and again if you guys want to go check out that Facebook giveaway make sure you go do that. I love you guys whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. I will see you in my next video. Bye! That was a bizarre thing to record. Sit. No. 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 Sit. Sit. Furious. Wow. Imagine if humans were like cats and we just rubbed up against everything. Oh, should we talk about the Queen's Gambit that we both found out that we're yes, in love we with? Yes, we should. Oh, shit.